All right, y'all, welcome to y'all sports pass part as West. I'm your host, Youth, and this week, second round of the playoffs has begun. Obviously, um, there are some teams that are still in, and there are some teams that are not. Let's look at the teams that are still in first. First, we're talking about Maryville, of course. Uh, both these are West teams, so one team is out, and that team is unfortunately William Blunt as Maryville wins 49 to 24 over the Dominers. Of course, this means Maryville will move on to the next round, while William Blunt is eliminated from the playoffs and will no longer be covered this year. However, they will be back next year on the West Channel, so stay tuned for that. But of course, as for Maryville, they're going to have a tougher challenge this week as they take on a. They're going to have a rematch at its Science Hill. This time, it is a home name for Maryville. They don't have to travel so far out to Johnson City. This is good news for Maryville, obviously, because Science Hill, the home field advantage, the game was pretty close, and Maryville only won 23-17. So this looks like good news for Maryville, and with the home field advantage, and with the momentum they have after winning the playoff game against William Blunt, I thought Maryville winning this game, no problem. While it is hard to beat a team twice, I say Maryville ended this one done. Next, we're going to head on to last week's game of the week, which was Jefferson County at Bearden. And as usual, these games don't usually live up to their expectations. Like, this game ended 49-14 in Bearden's favor. I expected this to be more close. But either Bearden had a really good momentum, played their best all year, or Jefferson County didn't really look like a playoff team. No disrespect to them, because they, of course, beat William Blunt to make it to the free seat anyways. So, I don't know what happened, but this will give Bearden momentum. Of course, coming in the next game, and it's Dobbins Bennett. Now, here's the thing. Um, the upper classman has had experience of playing, and it's playing at Dobbins Bennett before. Of course, they won that game barely 14-6. And with the momentum that um, Bearden is having right now, they could pull this off. Um, and with that, I have Bearden winning this game. It will not be a blowout, just like how the Jefferson County went name went um but it'll still be a pretty good um pretty good win for Bearden to say the least now of course I said Davis Bennett was playing Bearden um this is going into the fair the game which I will cover very soon it might not be good news for fair defense because I said Davis Bennett was playing Bearden but we'll get to them and finally we're going to talk about West um I said finally as uh this will affirm the team that are eliminated of course, West handles David Crockett it's 66 to 7. This is not surprising because West is a more talented team and they have the one seed. So, clearly, one seeds do beat four seeds. But this week, they have a rematch. This was a, was a game I did not cover for West. But this time, West has the home field advantage, so I will be able to cover this game. And that team they're playing is at Knoxville Halls. Now, of course, the first matchup was covered by the North Channel because that was a game Halls had the home field advantage in. But this week, it's going to be West having the home field advantage. So it's my turn to cover Halls and West. There's a saying, as I said before, it's hard to beat a team twice. West barely beat Halls in overtime in the last uh, game. Um, and while West does have the home field advantage, Beating David Crockett at 66 7 is not really a momentum cover. Halls, however, just beat Morristown West to win their first playoff game in a while. I'm of course saying this because I think that I I think that Halls is a West team this week because the North Channel has four teams left. Well, actually five teams left, but I'm taking Halls this week as a joke. Just to make it even because I have three teams left. The uh, Debs is still in it. Anderson County is still in it. Powell's still in it. Paul's is still in it, obviously, as you see in the game of the week. And surprisingly, Austin East is still in, as they made an upset last week. But nevertheless, um, it's hard to be a team twice. I have Halls winning this game, despite West being at home. Halls has much of the moment, moment, moment. Excuse me there. Let's rewind a bit. Momentum after they beat Morristown West. And with that momentum, I think Halls can win this game. Of course, if this is the case, uh, 
I will no longer be able to cover West this season as they're out of the playoffs, but of course, they will be back next season on the West Channel. Of course, now we're going to talk about the teams that are unfortunately out of the playoffs after round one. And the first team we're going to talk about is Faraday. Of course, um, now I went to this game surprisingly. I have highlights up on my channel. But Faraday took a loss to Davis Bennett, 42 24. And if they did win this game, they would have to travel to Bearden. So, of course, it's safe for Faraday to not travel to Bearden. But then again, losing the playoffs is not a good way to end your season, especially in the first round. But Faraday will be able to rebound next season after their four game winning streak. There's a lot of good teams. So, let's see how Faraday does that season. Cars is another team that has been eliminated. I already talked about William Blunt, how they lost to Marable. Um, Cars, better season than last year, but ended their season in a tough loss to East Hamilton. Now, of course, this was an expected one seed win over four seed, so to be honest, it was kind of clear that East Hamilton was going to win the game, but Cars had a better season than last year, and they have the momentum next year to hopefully get more wins. And as... Um, it's been announced here that Cars will be moving to Region 2 next year. So I don't know about how good they're going to be. They're going to have a tougher district. They're going to have Powell. They're going to have William Blunt. They're going to have West Central and Halls. Um, and all those teams. So it's not looking real good for Cars district-wise. But I think they still keep some opponents like Harden Valley. But you got to keep the, uh, that rivalry on Dolan. So... Hopefully better season for Arns. Speaking of districts, um, of course, I'm adding two new teams into the West Channel next year. Oak Ridge is one of those teams as they're moving to 6A Region 2. So they will be playing against Bearden, Maryville, Faraday, Horn Valley, and the two Bradley teams that are in 6A. It's a bit of a challenge for Oak Ridge as they had an easier district last year, but now they're going to have to face harder teams like Bearden, Maryville, and Cleveland. Of course, I think the good news for Oak Ridge is that the the Battle of Solway's bat, the Crane Horn Valley, wants it in for the first time since 2020. So I'm going to look forward to that. That'll probably be game of the week. And uh, William Blunt will be moving to 5A Region 2. So they'll be playing it. It's Powell and West. And for 4A Region 2, Alpoa, another team that I'll be adding on to the West Channel, will be in 4A Region 2. So they'll, so they'll be playing against the likes of Anderson County and Dibs, maybe a lot of the North Channel teams. But they do play South Doyle, which I can definitely cover that day. And, you know, I was thinking about adding Heritage to the West Channel, but that would be in an uneven 11 teams. So I don't know if I'm able to do that. I was thinking of adding Heritage so I'd have all Blunt County teams in there, but I kind of prefer to put an Oak Ridge instead of Heritage. And of course, Heritage is also now a 4A Region 2 team. Anyways, this is the All Sports Pass Podcast West. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to subscribe to the North channel as well. That will really help us out. Your host, Eve, sign out.